Hi everyone, it's Melissa from Welcome to the Woods. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made a geometric accent wall behind my bed in our master bedroom. I love how this project turned out. It's very modern and minimalistic. You can make this just like I did with simply one two by four board. So you can see that I'm ripping my two by four on the table saw. And this is a 10 foot long board. I got a 10 foot long one because I'm going to be putting the slats at a 45 degree angle across the wall. And since I have eight foot ceilings, the slats needed to be long enough. I supported this 10 foot long two by four with a bin flipped over on one side that was about the same height as my table saw top and then a ladder on the other side. Now I took very careful care at the lumber yard to pick out a two by four that had minimal knots and minimal blemishes because I want to get as many perfect slats out of this as possible. If I were to go buy one by two slats at the lumber yard, they would cost like two fifty dollars a piece. This one two by four cost me about $8 and I'm going to get um, six slats out of it and it's going to allow me to do the entire wall. So you can see I'm ripping them half inch thick and I'm actually gonna turn them on their side so that the one and a half inch thickness of the two by four is the width of the board and then the half inch that I'm ripping is the depth. I think the fact that I only used one piece of lumber to create this accent wall makes this project unique and more accessible. You also probably noticed that I have a big belly in the way. Yes, I did this project when I was nine months pregnant. Um, in fact, the majority of the install happened on the day that I went into labor, and you'll see that in a few clips. So just so you know, this project is easy enough. Anybody can do it. Couple things I wanna point out when doing this yourself, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have either a shop bag hooked up for the sawdust, or you're definitely using a good mask to prevent sawdust particles getting in your nose and throat because there was a lot of sawdust doing this. Um, you can see that I'm wearing a mask from Parcel Safety and you can find that linked in the description on this video. If you're interested, it's a woodworking mask and it works super great. I also want to point out that when cutting something that's this close to the blade, only half an inch away, you must use a, um, a push stick and be very careful with doing something like this. I actually ended up cutting two two by fours into slats just because I didn't have a pre-planned vision of what my geometric accent wall was going to look like. So I wasn't sure exactly how many slats I needed. In the end, I did end up only using six slats. So you could recreate this with one piece of lumber. However, when some of these clips, when I'm sanding and priming, you'll see that I have many more than six slats I'm preparing. Anyway, the next step after slicing all these on my table saw is to get them sorted out and sanded, um, prepped to install on the wall. The first thing I did was inspect every slat and set them down so that the best side was on top. Um, obviously, cutting just a standard piece of lumber like this, there are going to be some blemishes, so I was very choosy on what was going to be in the forefront on my wall. And then I came across with my random orbital sander and sanded everything, sanding, priming, painting, and this job is the most tedious part. In this clip, it's especially visible that some of my slats did have some warping and bowing. However, I just chose the absolute straightest ones for the longest slats installed on the wall, and the ones that had some warping, I cut for the shorter pieces of slats. And that prevented me from really having an issue, even though there was some imperfection in the lumber that way. Now, after I sanded everything, I got them elevated. I just put some other lumber underneath to pull all the slats up and it made it easier for me to prime. I'm using a Kills interior exterior primer. This is just what I had on hand. And I'm using a four inch, three eighth inch nap fabric roller to get all these slats coated very quickly. So after the slats were primed, I came into my bedroom and started to prep it for install. Now I took down what was currently decorating the wall, it was just a blue watercolor painting I did long ago, and then I moved the furniture out of the way. I have these mid-century end tables that I love, I redid, and then this upholstered navy bed. Um, I like my furniture and I'm not planning to change the furniture, I just want something special behind the bed to kind of elevate the design and set off what we already have. 
I am, however, going to get a brand new mattress. We got a hybrid mattress from Tuft & Needle that I'm excited to tell you about a little later in this video. So here I am marking off the studs on the wall. I'm using a magnetic stud finder from Sage Hansen. This is one of the tools I recommend all the time. It's only $7 and it's a foolproof way to find the studs in your wall. Once I had my studs marked, I knew where I should shoot nails into the slats so that the nails actually sucked the slat tight against the wall. The nails I'm using are 18 gauge brad nails that are an inch and a half long. And with my rigid brad nailer that's cordless, this project was a cinch. I mean, I just lined up the slat where I wanted it and I just nailed it in real quick. So you can find links to all of the tools I used in the description on this video. You can see here my miter saw setup. I have a cordless miter saw as well from Craftsman and I put a piece of cardboard up to catch some of the sawdust, but it would have been better if I had my shop vac hooked up. I don't know. I was just kind of being lazy. Um, but anyway, I cut all of the slats to 45 degree angles at the edges and when they met another slat on the wall, the cut is just straight, which you could see here. I didn't actually plan out the design on this wall. What happened was, is I started with a really straight slat and I ran it the entire length from the baseboard to the ceiling. I installed that and then I worked off of that piece. So you can see I created a V to the left and then I started doing some straight pieces as well. I just kept building off of what I already had and would stand back every so often to just check it, like look at it visually and see if it was balanced. But in general, like I've seen people do these walls before and they plan out the measurements all ahead of time. And I just did not do that. I just kind of winged it and I love how it turned out. Once I had all of the slats nailed up, I came and caulked every single seam. This is maybe overkill if you're not a perfectionist, but I really wanted this geometric accent wall to look so good and since it's all going to get painted white, if there were any gaps between the slat and the wall, you'd be able to see them. So filling these with an interior siliconized latex caulk was the best bet to hide all that. I also filled all the nail holes with drywall compound. I didn't use caulk for that because the drywall compound sands completely smooth. After that step, that evening I went into labor. <laughs> and so these next clips, I'm in the same outfit. I did that intentionally <laughs> just to show you um, the belly is gone and Liam is here. These next clips were finished a couple weeks postpartum. Now again, I'm here with my random orbital sander, sanding all of the drywall compound smooth to cover up any of the nail holes. But I also sanded the wall between all of the slats because the previous paint job um, had some like dripping and stuff and I wanted everything to look so good and flat and just really professional. The last step to prep the wall before painting was to wipe everything down with a damp washcloth. Now you might wonder why I didn't paint the slats ahead of time. It's because the caulk and the drywall compound need the paint too in order for everything to be one continuous color. So that's why the slats just got primed, installed, and now I'm going to paint and cover everything I've done. So starting with a paintbrush, I love the Wooster brand. This is a one and a half inch angled brush. I am coming in and doing all of the edges. This is definitely tedious. I think even just the brushwork took me like an hour and a half, but this is really important to prevent drips because if you try to paint the whole wall with a roller, you would end up with buildup paint all over the place. When I actually rolled, again, I used the mini roller just because it allowed me to get on each slat without much excess paint dripping off the edges. I made sure that my roller was offloaded before going on the slats for this same reason. So you can see when I cover the slat and the wall all this beautiful white, I use Sandbar White um, by Dutch Boy Paint. It blends together so beautifully and it just is this really subtle accent. I'm going to do a couple other little upgrades to this room in order to just really set it off. I'm taking down the broken blinds and the dark gray curtains I had as the window treatment and putting up these beautiful white billowy blackout curtains from K. George. 
Um, you might have seen a long time ago, I did this conduit curtain rod hack. This curtain rod spans nine feet, is super strong. It's made out of conduit and it only cost me 17 bucks. So if you wanna check out that video, I'll link it right here in the cards and the description. So I have these white curtains now and I love how that looks. It lets a lot more light into the room. Um, and hopefully I'll get some blackout roller shades in the future just to darken it for nighttime. Now, super exciting, I get to tell you about our new Tuft & Needle mattress. This is a mattress in a box company, so you just order it online and they ship it right to your door. The box is super heavy, my husband helped me get it up the stairs, but basically the mattress is like shrink wrapped into this box. And if you've never bought a mattress, in a box before don't worry it's not nearly as scary as it sounds they have a like guarantee and a return easy return policy so don't worry about not liking it i would definitely give it a try this hybrid mattress is a hybrid because it actually has both springs and the foam my favorite thing about tuft and needle is that it's a very cooling mattress because it's made with both ceramic gel and graphite which actually like wicks heat away from you that is really really comfortable if you're like a sweaty sleeper i definitely struggle with that especially postpartum um, if you've ever been postpartum you know that you just in general have a harder time getting comfortable and i have loved our new tuft and needle mattress it's helped me get better sleep especially since i'm only getting a couple hours at a time right now I think this part is so fun to watch the shrink wrap come off and the mattress just inflate. Some of these mattress in a box companies require you to let the mattress inflate for multiple days before using it, but Tuft & Needle says just a couple hours. So that's super great. And there was like no smell, no factory smell at all. It smelled great coming right out of the packaging. So Tuft & Needle also sent me their mattress protector. This is a queen size mattress. So the queen size mattress protector was really well made. It's probably the best mattress protector I've ever put on and it's going to protect not only our mattress, but also our warranty. So I am really happy with our new bed, obviously, and covered with my cozy earth bamboo sheets. It is like sleeping in a cloud. I love it. It's firm support, but very soft and comfortable. I could sleep all day on this thing. If you're in the market for a new mattress, I would definitely recommend Tuft & Needle. Check out the description for a link to the hybrid mattress that we got. Okay, last thing I want to do before this room is finished is install some lights above our bedside tables. I got these bronze colored lights off Amazon. It was only $60 for the pair and I thought they would look beautiful as sconces flanking our bed. Now, I just placed them kind of arbitrarily based on where I put the slats and where they're gonna fit. These are well-made and they're actually plug-in. So I can unwrap the wiring in the back, connect it to the plug that comes with. You can do them hardwired if you already have the junction box there, but most beds don't have lice on either side. So this plug-in option is super great. I just wired it together and the plugs are clear so you can't really see them. They just disappear against the wall. These are a great option if you want lights anywhere that there isn't already electrical running but you can maybe hide a um, extension cord or whatever behind a piece of furniture in my case i hid mine behind the bed all right everyone here she is my geometric accent wall behind the bed turned out better than i imagined especially considering i didn't plan the design or really measure anything at all i just cut and went <laughs> talk about winging it I love it. I think it really elevates the design in this room, especially when I'm designing white on white on white. Now here's a question for you. Should I rehang my blue watercolor? Do you like it up on top of the bed or do you think the accent wall speaks for itself? If you could help me out by putting your opinion in the comments below, that would be great. You can see that I also added a hanging plant in the corner. That planter was actually made by my sister who's a ceramic artist. So it's very special to me and I love how it goes with everything else. My bed is a really common spot for me to relax. I sit and read here. I also do a lot of editing and work on my computer here. So it's great that now it's even more stylish. Um, I have an awesome mattress that's more comfy and I have extra lighting. 
that I can use whenever I need to. So many fun DIYs in this room, you guys, including that giant mirror, the redo of the mid-century modern dresser set, and now this awesome geometric accent wall. If you want to see my other projects in this room, just don't forget to visit my other videos on my channel and consider subscribing because you never know what I'm going to DIY next. Thank you guys all so much for checking out my master bedroom room makeover. I love this space. I love how light, airy, and modern it is. If you want to see some behind the scenes of my DIYs or what I am doing with my family, then you can follow me on Instagram. My handle is at welcome to the woods blog. You can find that link in the description as well. We will catch you guys again next time on welcome to the woods. We have some really big things coming up um, and I can't wait to share them with you.